In this video, I'm going to give you a perspective on how to improve your painting quickly and easily. Welcome back to Mini Junk, everyone. My name is Jarrett. You know, I can't talk and smile at the same time. I want to. I can't. I want to be more welcoming and I just can't do it. I don't know what it is. Anyway, most of my videos are about painting certain effects or painting certain miniatures and I'm walking through my steps to do that. And that's fine. And I think that's going to be always the bulk of my content. But sometimes I'll think of a topic or something I just want to put out there for you guys uh, related to miniature painting that's going to be not involving me actually painting anything. And most recently that came up when I started to check out Darren Latham's channel. So Darren is a fairly well-known uh, Games Workshop employee, goes way back to heavy metal painting, and I believe he also now actually designs their miniatures. Insanely talented, and his channel is blowing up, uh, rightly so. Uh, he, his subscriber count is going up very quickly, and so is the quality, quality of his videos and his content, and it's just, it's awesome. And I'll have a link in the description below, of course. And a recent video I checked out was his Silver Skulls uh, showcase. Now, obviously you'd expect from a, a man of his talent and his painting caliber, you'd expect that army to look great. And it absolutely does. It's incredible and it's big and it's expanding. And what's cool is he, even he applies this thought process of some models should get X amount of effort and some should get Y amount of effort. So the more common the intercessors and things like that, the, the lesser units get a little bit less work and then uh, characters and some vehicles get more work and that makes total sense but what struck me as i was watching that video beyond the quality of things like blending and and whatnot was the sheer neatness of his paint jobs every well there are no brush strokes every color every segment every shading every line is precise and clean and for example, if you look at an intercessor bolter that has red, there's on any single figure, there's not a drop of red out of place on the gun. There's never a stray brush stroke that hit the wrong area. Every line he does is the same, as far as I can tell, the same width the whole way, things like that. Like it is just crisp. And that applies even again to the lesser, lesser paint jobs of just the basic troops even without some advanced techniques they are just a, a marvel of precision and, and tidiness in their paint jobs and so that gave me this idea that i wanted to put forward for new painters and people just starting out or even people who are in a rut and having trouble improving and i count myself among people who could benefit from this point of view in the sense that i am frequently messy with my paint jobs. Although I will say I'm intentionally messy a lot of the time because I'm intentionally going very quickly because my standard for gaming is A and my standard for something for display or a contest piece would be different. And my point here is going to be that when you're starting out, it's easy to start to fall into this trap of how do I learn how to wet blend? How do I learn non-metallic metal? How do I learn great layering for highlights, you know, Zenithal priming. How do I do that? How do I learn great conversions and pinning? Things like that. Things that are all somewhat of a step beyond the basics. What I'd like to suggest is before any of that, focus on this fundamental idea of being neat with your painting. Because even a paint job that is relatively quick and fast and f maybe even flat per se in terms of the highlighting and the shading, if it is done in an extremely neat and clean and precise way, that is automatically going to look better than one that has had a lot of sloppiness to it where there's colors that are going where they shouldn't be. And so how do you do that? Well, the first step is decide if that's what you want for a particular job. I keep saying that. Decide, do I need this to look amazing? Or, you know, for me personally or for my opponents, do I care? Or do I need to get this done quicker? Is this like a, a tier two warband for me that I won't use much? And, and put your effort in accordingly. But when you're striving for neatness, I would say there's several different things you can look for that can help you elevate that right away. The first thing would be to get to invest in pretty good quality brushes, uh, not just pretty good, pr high quality brushes. So Sable Hair, we're talking about Raphael, we're talking about Windsor Newton, we're talking about other brands that I can't think of right now. But basically a Sable Hair brush is going to hold its tip much, much better than the cheap craft brushes you can buy at places like Walmart or Michaels. And the precision of that tip, the fact that it's not splaying and splitting while you're trying to paint, 
is automatically going to make it so much easier for you to stay inside the lines as you're painting your miniature. It's going to prevent those stray little strokes of color going on areas you don't want them to be. It really alleviates a lot of frustration and ever since the day I bought my first Winsor & Newton Series 7, the, the difference was just amazing. Thin your paints, you hear that all the time. I have a video on the topic, I think. Uh, it's really not that hard. Don't worry about milk consistency and things like that. Just start out with like taking a little bit of your paint on a palette, whether it's a wet palette or not. Add a little bit of um, thinner flow improver, even water just a bit to thin it down and get it flowing nicely and you'll start there's no way for me to say add x amount or this many drops it's always dependent on the paint on the atmosphere conditions how hot it is whatever but start to work towards a place where you're not leaving brush strokes or, or leaving clumpy surfaces and that's where you need to be to have a neat looking paint job when you use shades and contrast paints wick up any deep pooling you see you, you can't just put it on and put it down and move on you need to keep an eye on it for a minute or two where you're gonna see as the paint starts to flow down it'll start to pool you know along the belt lines or um, in, the, in the neck dimples whatever so just watch for dark pooling because when that dries it's hard to you kind of almost can't fix that once it's there it's tough to cover it up and it will contribute to this idea of them looking messy dry brushing is a great technique that speeds things up a lot when it comes to painting but you should restrict it to if you're going for this level of neatness restrict it to only things that have a lot of texture to them so things like fur if you decide to paint it that way or chain mail and don't use it on flatter surfaces or faces automatically what's going to happen is you're going to get odd streaking and powdery looking finishes that take away from that sense of neatness. When you're actually painting and you're trying to keep it neat and precise, brace your hands together like this. I don't know if I'll have a close up. You, you see this often from painters in various videos, even Warhammer TV. You brace them together, that holds both hands steady, allows you to be more precise as you're painting the surface. If you're just holding it like this, you're gonna find this hand can get a lot shakier and have more trouble applying your paint in a precise way. Do the hard to fix stuff first. I often say that as well. Hard to fix is a couple things. Hard to fix is interiors of, of your sculpt. So for example, if you paint deep inside the recessed area of a, of a helmet or armor, that is going to be hard to fix later if you get you know some weird pooling in there or something because you so you're doing the work and you're working your way outwards it's easier to fix stuff on the outside by sheer accessibility but also anything light colored or that has been light, light colored and has been highlighted and layered a fair bit can be tougher to fix than a dark color a dark color it's your fixes are going to blend in a lot more and be easier to hide versus light where you could easily apparently dark is here and light is here a blotch of dark paint that you get on your light surface is going to be tough to cover up in a way that's uniform. Uh, a wet palette helps because it keeps the colors you've been using wet and you can go back to them but often you can just find a color that's going to match and you can you can patch that up. Go back and fix mistakes. So as you paint as you come to the end you're going to be able to turn and look and look at your miniature and you're going to see the exact same mistakes and errors that everyone else is going to see either when you're showing them your model that you're proud of or putting it online. These are again stray brush strokes, stray bits of shade that hit the wrong spot that wasn't supposed to, that kind of thing. Clean those up, just go back, find the right color to cover it up and just literally brush over it. This may not result in as pristine a paint job as Mr. Latham is achieving of course, but it will take your work that much further to being sharp and crisp and looking really nice, especially at a three foot level when you're playing your games. Hey, if you're a more seasoned painter and you've got other ideas for how to achieve a really neat, crisp paint job, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear it. This isn't a catch-all. I'm not a genius at painting. I'm just putting, putting out my point of view on a way that people can fairly easily start to elevate their paint job quality. I hope you found this video enjoyable and entertaining. It was a short one, just a quick topic, a quick tete-a-tete, -tete, if you will. Wah, 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 wah